Um, but you guys are, have currently arrived at Ask the Texperts. And I am very excited to be your show host today. And Amanda is going to, both Amanda and Michelle are presenting. So we have it recording. Um, we keep the show flowing. There's room for questions. I'll be monitoring chat. Um, we will have everybody mute so that we can um, make sure that we don't have any background noise. And it does get recorded and put up on the um, Tech Lab website. And we'll share that link in the end in the chat as well. So it's my pleasure today to let you know that our topics are my internet went out, now what? And Facebook settings. And again, we're going to have your questions come in at any point in time that you want. We're going to be starting off today with Amanda, who's our Director of Operations at Tech Lab. She's been there since 2013. So Amanda comes from a little bit of an uh, educational background. So her master's is in education and instructional technology. But she also has been with Tech Lab, again, since 2013, doing uh, business development, sales, and marketing. And then after her, we'll have Michelle going with the um, My Internet Went Out, and Now What? And Michelle, you guys have hear been hearing from her a lot on our shows. She's been with Tech Labs just since March 2019 and has been doing a wonderful job as a project coordinator and has saved my tail on a number of things, which I truly appreciate. Um, actually, you know, I've known of Tech Lab through our association through the Brookfield Chamber for, you know, a year-ish, um, maybe a little bit longer, but I am now a proud customer of Tech Lab and they're handling many things for me, which I appreciate that opportunity as well. So that said, I think it's time for me to stop talking and for me to stop sharing the screen and give it up for Amanda to take it away. You ready, Amanda? Yes. Hey, I'm actually going to have Michelle share with us first. She's going to share her phone with you because I'm going to be talking to you guys about your Facebook settings today, okay? And then after that, Michelle talked to you about your internet went out, now what? Um, so how many of you guys are accessing your Facebook through your phone? About half to most? Okay, all right. Um, and then the rest I do mainly do it through the, the computer thing as well. So Michelle's going to join her phone and she's going to share a video with you to show you how to get to the settings area in your Facebook um, so that you can kind of um, go from there. Oops, I lost my thing. One moment, please. There we go. Okay. Um, everyone, I apologize. I don't have the Facebook app, so this is in the browser on the phone. Okay. So... She she did have a Facebook app at one she, point. Oh, Why? I take it back. Hold on. Maybe I <laughs> there we go. Yeah, she did. She, she was explaining to me how to use it. So there are three lines on the bottom in your app, um, in the bottom right hand corner, and that is where you're going to go to get to your settings. Um, and then from there you can, yeah, scroll down to settings and privacy, and click on that. Um, and then you're going to click on um settings I believe okay so then when you're in this area you can uh, make sure that <coughs> sorry that your name is up to date um, you've got the correct email address um, you can take payments in Facebook um, they usually have it locked down and then it's kind of like a person-to-person -person thing but also know that if you are not comfortable with that a you don't have to but B you can always take your card off um, I had to put something in to make a transaction with somebody, but then I didn't want my card to stay on Facebook. And so I went in and I made sure I deleted that information as well. So just know that with, with you've got stuff set up on your um, Facebook payment, you can add it and you can remove it. Um, you can also include PayPal and PayPal is definitely a secure way. And PayPal can usually back you up as well if something would go awry as well. So um, Michelle, you can go back. Okay, so then um, click on security and log in, Michelle. Okay, so some things to note here is that if you get locked out of your um, Facebook account, that you can choose three to five people to help um, unlock you. They do recommend this to everybody, and honestly, my mom is currently in this situation, and she's going to be adding people so she can get back into her Facebook. Um, and so basically, you just have some added people that you can trust. Um, also, I, I'm not sure if it's this feature or if it's a different one, but let's say, I know this is morbid, but let's say if you pass, those people also can get into your Facebook account um, and kind of help monitor it, especially after you're passing. So that's a good thing to, to do as well. 
Um, then take note of where you are logged in. So it's going to show you every device that is currently logged into your account. So this is Michelle's account. And so you can see that there are four or five locations that have access to her account currently that are logged in. If any of those are not familiar to her, all she has to do is hit log out of all sessions and everything is automatically closed. And I believe to those three buttons on the side there, Michelle, also allow you to um, close just that one. Yep, just that individual one. So if you click on those three buttons on the side, that vertical column there, you can click on that and you can log out of that one if you know that one of them is definitely not you. So it's just a way um, for you to take note of where you're logged in. Go I ahead. just want to note that um, this is not always the smartest thing. I Previously, when I was logged in, it claimed I was in Manitowoc, and it definitely was my phone um, because it was the only device that was logged in. I wasn't in Manitowoc. I was in Franklin, but it was kind of a little bit goofy. Um, and my Mac is actually a tablet, an iPad, um, but it doesn't know the difference. So realize that you could be logging yourself out, but first, from a security standpoint, it's better to log yourself out um, than to let somebody who you don't know in your account, if you're just not sure. Okay, so you can click out of that and then um, go backwards as well. So as Michelle just said, it's not necessarily 100% active, but it is good to kind of take stock every once in a while to see where you're logged in with your Facebook as well. If you ever get hacked, the very first thing that you should do is go in and change your password. And so this is where you're going to go in and change your password because it's going to stop the hacker from having access to your account and it's going to just end that session so that you can stop spamming your friends on their Facebook Messenger and all this other stuff. So in that login area, you would click on the change password. Um, another good, and you would enter in your current password and then you have to retype a new password and then just hit save changes and you're good to go. So in your, then um, go back, Michelle. Thank you. The other thing place to go is two-factor fa two authentication. Um, it's just a higher level of security by incorporating that two-factor authentication. And so what that means is that you would be asked to enter in your password and then from there you would also likely get like a text message sent to you that you would just enter the code that they give you um, to do that. Now, a lot of people don't have this activated in their Facebook. I don't know, personally I have a mixed view on it. I don't know if I'd want to for my Facebook, but for my banking, yeah for other super important things, yeah, that makes sense too. So I guess it's gonna depend on how much your Facebook is connected to other things and how much you use your Facebook to log, like I said, to log into your, your other apps because Facebook is a way that you can get into other apps too. So if you use your Facebook as a way to get into other apps, definitely I would turn on your two-factor authentication and make it easier so you know that you're the one that's in it. Or if, you're, if you get hacked in your Facebook a lot, Turning on your two-factor authentication is definitely a good thing. So that's something to keep in mind as well. All right, you can go back, Michelle. Um, then you can also scroll down and you can set up alert for unrecognized logins. So if, you, if they log in for something that you don't normally use, they would send you an information uh, alert saying, hey, this looks like it isn't you. And so you can confirm or deny that kind of thing. So, that's something that you can go in and you can um, change. Um, what are some of your security concerns when using Facebook? What do you mean by that, Jennifer? Sorry, it's a good question, but. I'm actually monitoring chat. So I was actually asking the group to see if they had additional concerns to share with you. Got it, okay. Um, then can you scroll down a little bit more? Thank you. Oh, this is also in the areas too that you can control what kind of notifications and emails you get from Facebook. So the whole recent emails from Facebook, that can be like, they'll send you an email when somebody updates and that kind of depends on the settings that you have um, set in place from there. Um, so those are all the things that have, they have emailed Michelle. Um, and yeah, I'm now, I think that's most of the settings within the phone. I'm trying to see if there's anything else that is in this computer that would be beneficial. Oh, um, is there, can you go to the privacy area, Michelle, since most people are on their phone? Mm. So I think you have to go back one more. Go to privacy shortcuts. Okay, 
in privacy, this is the area that you can see how many people, like who can see your posts. So if you want it to be just your friends, or if you want it to be completely public to anybody on the internet, or if you want it to be all of your friends except, you know, that those are all options as well. That maybe, maybe you have some professional relationships online that you don't want to see some of your personal stuff. And so you can exclude those people from seeing all of your Facebook posts. So that's something to, to note as well, that not everybody has to see everything. Um, and then you can kind of choose to limit your audience. Yes, ma'am. So I will tell you, I have used that just a little bit when I have some people that I love that I want to stay friends with, but right now is not a fun time for me to post stuff and engage them in conversation. So the thing that I've learned with doing that though is when I use that exception audience, that becomes the audience for your next post and your next post and your next post. Same thing is if you're posting something for public. So I rarely post to public. I'm mostly posting just to my friends and things like that. But if I do make something public, I have to remember the next time I go to post to put that back to a less public audience. Just one of those things like it, unfortunately, it becomes, I'm not going to say it becomes your default. It just becomes the thing that's used next. Yeah, I would agree. That's a good point. Thanks for sharing that. So, um, and then you could kind of limit to how searchable and how easy it is to find you on Facebook. If you've ever like tried to search for somebody and you're having a hard time finding that exact person. Now, I mean, okay, my name is Common. I like to say Amanda, Common. Davis, Common. You put the two together, Amanda Davis, more Common. So you put it all together and so I might naturally be hard to find, but if I want to be harder to find, I can kind of make, make some settings so that only certain people can find me or only certain people can request um, to become my friend and that kind of stuff. So um, that's also going to be controlled under your privacy settings. Um, Michelle, can you click on the review a few important privacy settings? I'm guessing that's where that is. Again, I'm kind of back on the computer and maybe I'll just, maybe I'll have Michelle stop sharing and I can share my screen then. Let me do that. I think that's going to be easier. And I know my time's almost up too, so I'm just going to show you this quick. Share. Okay. So in the computer, if you go on the computer and you want to um, share your, or check your settings, what you're going to do is you're going to go to the arrow and then you're going to go to the settings area. And then that is going to bring up your general settings that we just walked through on, on Michelle's phone. We also went through the security and login information on Michelle's phone. So it's the same exact information that we talked about. It's just on the computer. And now the area that we're talking about now is privacy. And the privacy um, setting is that's where you can see who can see your posts, how people can contact you, and that information. Um, and then I kind of mentioned it quickly, but just so you can see it, the notification settings, that's where you're going to see like where your comments go to and what emails they send to you and all of that kind of stuff. And you can go in and you can control all of this, whether you want it to be a push notification or send it to you in an email or any of that kind of stuff, um, you can go in and control all of that. So just know that all of that is an option. I'm trying to think if there's anything else, but yeah, public posts like, Mich like uh, Jennifer mentioned, you can choose to make some of your posts public if you would like. And I think the other thing to just note is location, is if your location history is on or off. Um, and then note that a lot of that's gonna go to Facebook itself. So just there of your, just like you have to be aware of your surroundings in a physical location, like as you're going for a walk or something, you kind of need to think about your, your digital surroundings as well when you're on these apps and whether, when you're using them, what they're, what they're using, what they're looking at and kind of going from there. So if anybody has any questions, I'm, I'm happy to answer them and I hope that that helps guide some of your information. So I think we might've covered this and I just want to draw everybody's attention to this. When we did the shopping securely online, one of the things that had come up was actually shopping from Facebook. So if you guys weren't here for that session, that just may be something to refresh because it's not really what we were covering in the content today. But I know one of my concerns is if I click on one of those ads, right? 
just like the things that they're talking about right now of um, Facebook, like the, the latest was some big RV camper giveaway and how that's not actually real. That is just a way to gather data. And seriously, you guys, Aldi and Kohl's and I don't know, Nordstrom, and they're not going to give you money for clicking and sharing on stuff. Now, I know that all my ladies on this call are very wise and very keen and onto that. And I like that. But there might be somebody that you love who is not as wise and keen onto that. So just Again, so just as a reminder and a point back to, we did do a whole segment that Michelle, I think, took us through a lot of the details about shopping online and knowing what's a scam. And the example that Amanda said is as you're walking around to know what you're on, like, are you on your mobile data, which is going to be more secure than jumping on all these random Wi-Fi's. So just wanted to add that. Um, did we have any other questions though? Questions from the group? We're a quiet group today. We are a quiet group today. I'm going to piggyback on one other thing that you had mentioned, though, Amanda, that you had said something about, let me see if I can do this. You had said something about like people finding you. And if you're on your mobile device, and if you are using Messenger, just so you guys know, I think um, many of you know Sue Gresham, and she's been sharing the how you can get a QR code. LinkedIn stole that from Messenger. Messenger did it first. And if you're not familiar, your little picture up in that upper left-hand corner, when you click that, and then you click it again, should work, please work, don't embarrass me. Come on, baby, you're embarrassing me. Are you, are you clicking in your picture? Just trying to yeah. figure out what you're doing, okay. Yep. It used to work. Oh, this is super embarrassing now. Now I'm gonna to have to go look it up. It Did used you? to bring up a QR code, just like it does in LinkedIn, but it would connect you on Messenger, which for some people, you're not trying to connect with them on LinkedIn. You are trying to do more of a Messenger type of thing, but it's gone, bummer. The other thing you can see in here though, let me try that, is that you can see your username, which will get them a more accurate um, way of finding you on Facebook versus um, just first name, last name. Interesting. Exactly. That's good to know. Yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. Now, you know, too much, you know, too much information and I will stop sharing. <laughs> Did you guys already go through, um, a training on how to demo from your phone? I think that's genius. I'd love to learn that. How about we put that for our next topic? Sure. Um, awesome. It's fun because I figured it out and then I shared, I did a one-on-one -on -one with Sue Gresham and we figured it out. And then M M Michelle and Amanda decided to do it today. And I'm like, brilliant. So yeah, now we need to do more of that. Hey, I'm gonna make a shout out to Irene here because it was on a call with um, Irene and her husband that we did, that I learned how to do this. Oh. Way to go, Irene. Yeah, Michelle's been doing it for a while. It's been awesome. Awesome, love it. Well, speaking of Michelle, Michelle. Yeah, she really helped us. It's because she is awesome. All right, Michelle, you ready to rock the next part of this? Yes. All right, take it away, please. Um, today I'm going to share with you guys about. Uh, I think I get there. Share. I'm going to share with you guys about what to do when your internet goes out. Um, can you guys? Let's see. I think you can yeah, we can see your PowerPoint. Good. Okay. Um, Do you want to hit, there you go. Um, so before I kind of explain like what do you do when your internet goes out, I want to give you a little bit of terminology. Um, so you pay what is your internet service provider um, for your internet. Um, examples of your internet service, the internet service providers in this area include AT&T and Spectrum. Um, the, your internet service provider is also known as your ISP. Um, when the when internet is installed in your house, you get boxes that connect you to the internet. Um, these boxes are what are known as modems and routers. Usually they'll give you two boxes. Occasionally they're combined into one box. Um, but the modem is what connects you to either the internet. Um, it's connected to a wire 
probably in your backyard somewhere and that's what gives you internet. Um, the router is what creates your network. Um, depending on whether or not you have a wired connect, a wired internet or a wireless internet, it'll either create your wireless connection or it'll add more ports for you. Um, some people have wired networks and some people have wireless networks. <clears throat> so for those of this, for those of you, some of you, this next part is going to be, you're going to be like, this is really basic, but I'm going to go over it anyway, just so you know. Um, so when you're connecting to a wired network, um, there's going to be a cable like this over here that's going to connect from your computer on a port like that one, that green one there, to another place on your wall or another device um, or another place somewhere in your house. Depends on kind of where it is. And as long as it's connected in those two spots, you have internet pretty much immediately. Um, if you guys have questions during any of this, throw it in the chat, please, so I can answer it. Because um, this is the part, because we're going to be moving on and it'll look at different as we start to move on. Um, when you have a wireless network, um, every wire, your router creates the wireless network for you and it creates a network that has a name and a password. And if you want to connect into that wireless network, you need the name of the network that you're trying to connect to and the password. Um, if you're not sure what it is and you're at home, um, you can check your router and it'll be, and, and as long as it hasn't been changed from the default, which is basically everybody's, um, it'll be written there somewhere on the router. Um, so then on your device, whether, and I'm saying your device here because it, it applies to your computer and it applies to every single mobile device you have, there'll be a place somewhere on the computer that'll say either internet or Wi-Fi, or there'll be a list of all of the different networks that you can connect to. Um, and you will choose the one that you want to connect to, and it will ask you for the password. And as long as you type in the password correctly and everything's kosher, um, you should be connected. Um, so my first part of what um, internet troubleshooting is, okay, um, I don't have time to go through the ten, next 10 steps we're gonna go to because I'm supposed to be in a meeting right now and actually running that meeting. Um, so my first thought for you guys is you can attend it Depending on what it is, you might be able to attend it from your cell phone through your mobile data. Um, not ideal, obviously, because cell phone is not the most ideal thing, but probably the easiest. Um, another thought would be to use the mobile, a mobile hotspot on your phone. This is also on some phones known as tethering. Um, but what it does is it's a, it's a setting on your phone, um, and it'll create a network that you can hook into your computer. Depending on the phone, it can be like um, you connect your phone into your computer, or it can be like, here's your wireless information that you put into your computer, and then you can do it. Then you can connect in with your computer. Um, I do want to mention that depending on the phone, um, this can create an extra charge for you. Um, so you want to look into your plan before you actually do this, just to see if there will be that extra charge. I'm told that Oftentimes, Apple phones don't have this extra charge, but Android phones often do. Um, so now this is the steps that I go to go through when I'm trying to troubleshoot my internet. Um, the first thing is you want to make sure that you actually have no internet. There are times when I'll go to a website and all of a sudden it'll be like, you don't have internet here. And I'll be like, do I? And then I go to Google and all of a sudden I have internet. Um, and it's just because that one particular website didn't work. Um, if you want to get to the website, I recommend trying a different browser. Um, like if you're on um, Chrome, try Firefox or Internet Explorer or Edge or something like that. You may have luck. Um, but if you can't get there on mobile data and your friend can't get there either, and you can still get to Google and another site, then I would say it's probably a website issue. Um, if you can get to other sites, if you can get to sites, but it's really slow, there's a number of things that could be going on. 
Um, so what I would recommend is that you try closing some other programs that you have open. Um, try closing some internet tabs. If you're on Zoom, try turning off your video. Um, and try turning off Wi-Fi and some of your other devices, and that may help. Um, if you actually have no internet, though, um, you'll want to check and see if you're connected to the internet. So, um, Michelle, one thought quickly of, of things that are connected to Wi-Fi. We don't always think of everything that's on Wi-Fi these days, but all of your phones usually connect into your Wi-Fi. Your tablets connect into your Wi-Fi. If you have any e-readers, those connect into your Wi-Fi. A lot of times our TV is connecting to our Wi-Fi. You have Google Home or any of those types of devices. All of those are connecting into your Wi-Fi. So any of your smart home devices too. Yes. So all of those are connecting in. So just kind of keep that in mind as you are looking at things to kind of turn off or see where things are at. And another thing that I, I do in my house too is if my computer isn't working and my husband does this too, we immediately check our phone being like, oh, is my phone actually working? Because then we know that it's like, hey, the problems with the computer or the problems with the, the, um, the phone itself and the internet. So if both our computer is down and our phone's down, then we know we got to start going back further to kind of make other problems be fixed. Um, if I don't find that my, Amanda's absolutely right. Um, I usually just to go to that a little bit later. So I will go into a little know, bit later. That, but that, um, let me start with this. Uh, Cause this is really, this I really want you guys to understand is um, if you don't get, if you, if you are really not connected to the internet, if you're really not getting any internet, is there's, can you guys see where my, my cursor is? No, you guys can't. Mm. Let's see, let me try this again. You guys can't see where my cursor is, can you? Down in the bottom, in the corner. Yeah, where it says my spectrum Wi-Fi A zero dash five G. Oh, you can. We got it. We got it. Okay, um, right next to that line is this weird looking dot with like lines coming off of it. Y'all can see that, right? Yep. That is my internet. If I click on it, it'll say connected, secured up here. Um, that means that I'm connected, to, that it thinks I'm connected to the internet. Um, if you have a wired connection, it'll that that icon will look something different, but you should have some kind of icon like that on your computer. Um, sometimes you have to click up on this carrot thing to be able to find it, um, but somewhere it is there. And that's how you look at the networks that are available. Um, so you can see that I'm connected to this Wi-Fi, my spectrum Wi-Fi A0-5G. But you can see a bunch of other networks here. So when we were talking about earlier about how to connect to um, internet networks, this is how you find them. Um, you'll want to make sure that you're corrected to the correct network. Um, when you're at, if you're at work, for example, and you have a Wi-Fi, if you have a guest network that you've connected to before and you are having problems. It could be just that you've connected to a guest network that you didn't mean to connect to. Um, another thought is that sometimes um, when you're having internet issues, it could be just that your Wi-Fi is pretty um, weak. You can see on this one here that I'm looking at, it's only got like one bar. That's, and if I'm having issues connecting to the internet, it can just be because I'm not close enough to the router. Um, the one I'm actually connected to has a bunch of like white bars here. And that means that it's a pretty strong connection. I'm fine. Um, so if you do have that issue, just move closer to, to your spectrum boxes. Um, if you, usually you should see a bunch of, depending on what your surroundings are like, if you're in a residential area or a populated area you'll probably see a bunch of networks like this but if one for some reason all of a sudden you don't that may mean your wi-fi is turned off um, i'm going to show you how to fix that or how to how to easily fix that um, but this box here is blue that's a good sign um, if it's not blue you can click on it and it'll turn it back on again um, 
if you don't see your Wi-Fi network in here, then that's a bad sign, and that may, and you'll probably want to skip to step four, which we will talk about in a few minutes. Um, but assuming that you do have a the that it is showing up or you can't see any networks, the next thing to do would be to right click on that um, that particular that that um, that internet icon and click troubleshoot problems. Um, and that will see what kind of problems you're having. I don't have any problems, so I'm going to cancel it. Um, if you're on a wireless connection, it'll recommend that you try out some wired connections. If you're really having problems, um, skip that step. If you're on a wired connection, it will recommend that you try out some wireless options. Skip that step. Um, if you're on a mobile device, I'm going to recommend that you turn off your Wi-Fi for 30 seconds and then turn it back on. Um, it's going to reset your Wi-Fi so that it can kind of just reconnect itself. So that's why she's suggesting that 30 seconds. That is definitely very helpful and something that I use frequently. So yep. is this something though, like the, because literally the reason I'm at the office today is because in the last two days since uh, the hurricane global, I don't know, pan, the hurricane global pandemic murder hornets attacked my house. Um, <laughs> my, my internet has been running it's been crawling. Like typically I can get a speed of 75, 60. Today it was four. So would, yeah, so that's bad. And I could not be the hostess with the mostest today if I was on a speed of four, literally four. So um, again, why I came to the office, but are some of these things like the troubleshooting and things like that, should I be going through that at home too, based on my situation? Um, You can. Your particular situation, um, there's certain things you want to roll rule out first. Considering you're telling me that it came right after the weather, my first thought is that there's going something going on with like potentially the wires or something like that. So if you, um, I'm going to say this to you because I think you know how to do this. Um, but if you have an Ethernet cord and you plug back in, into the back of your modem. You can run a speed test. Um, you can just go to speedtest.net, and that'll let you know if your modem, if your internet is having an issue. I and never even thought to plug in. I've been doing, I've been doing speed tests wirelessly and like, think, you know, praying. But you're saying it's it's them, maybe them, not me, which would make me feel better. That would be my first guess. Roll that out first. Um, whenever you run a speed test, the speed test is going to recommend that you plug directly into the back of the modem for that reason. Um, because that'll show you what you're supposed to be getting from your um, ISP. But that's going to show you that. It's not a bad idea that you did it wirelessly too, because that's going to help show other errors as well. So, well, and this is, this is why I do hardware, not software. That's why we have you guys. Yeah, um, the, these various steps that I'm going through with you guys are ruling out different problems. Our step one ruled out issues with your browser and it ruled out issues with the website. Step two is ruling out like, you know, basically computer network connection issues kind of a thing. Um, this step three is more or less, step three and four will rule out um, device specific issues. Um, and I say this because the step four is when you check another device on your same network and see if, as Amanda mentioned before, and see if that device has the same problems. Um, when you're, as Amanda mentioned, a cell phone can be a great way to do that, um, but you do need to make sure that your cell phone is on Wi-Fi. With people who have their cell phone not on Wi-Fi, if, you um, if your cell phone's just on mobile data and you check this out and you see that your cell phone isn't having any problems, that won't mean that you don't have any issues with your network. It just means that your mobile data is working, which is great. We want our mobile data to work. Um, so the next thing, so if that device isn't having the same problems, um, that more suggests to me that you're having an issue with a specific device that you're looking at. Um, you do want to be careful with this because I've been known to call across the um, house to my family, hey, are you having internet issues? And they just didn't check it. They said, no, we're not having internet issues, but they just didn't check it. So they didn't really know. Um, but when I checked it, then I realized that they were having that issue. Um, so, but if they aren't having the same issue, it could be that 
a number of things going on. It's worth it to try and turn off some devices, wi some other devices, Wi-Fi. Try moving closer to the router. Troubleshoot your computer's Wi-Fi, which is to say, basically, if you skipped our previous steps, go back and do them. Um, but if the other device is having the same problems, it is probably an internet issue and not just your device. Uh, so the next step is going to involve unplugging your boxes that the, that Spectrum or AT&T gave you um, and then plugging them back in again. And this is going to take your internet down. So this is when I always call across, call across the house, family, the internet's going down for about 15 minutes if it wasn't, if they didn't already think that. Um, so anyway, what you do is you go over to those boxes um, and you unplug them and you unplug them for two minutes. If you don't unplug, if you leave them only unplugged for like 10 seconds, it will not restart it. So you need to leave them unplugged for about two minutes. When you plug them back in, um, it'll take about 10 minutes for them to come on. If you try and go on um, before they're all the way back on, you'll be like, hey, it's not working. And it doesn't mean it's not working. It just means that you haven't waited long enough. Uh, when the lights on those boxes are all solid, then your internet should be working again, and you can try and run through the earlier steps all over again. If the lights, however, are flash remain flashing red or something like that, you have a problem. And this is the when you need to call in some experts. So what you would do is you would call in your ISP at that point. Your ISP can fix a number of issues. Um, they can sometimes provide you with new equipment that will speed up your system, and their service is generally free with your internet package. Um, if there are any weather-related issues, like Jennifer, you might have had, um, or Sarah, I believe you mentioned that some chipmunks were nesting in your internet box. Um, yeah, that's something that your ISP has to fix for you, unfortunately, um, yeah. And there are certain things that have to be ruled out before a tech company can really help. Um, but if the ISP says that they cannot fix your problem, it's a good idea to call an IT company. Um, also, if you're like, hey, ISP, I am having super problems. And they're like, no, you're not. Or they're like, um, I don't know what the heck you're, I don't know what you're talking about. It can be useful to call in an IT company to translate between the two of you. Um, other things that a tech company can help with that the ISP wouldn't necessarily help with um, are putting devices like printers on your network, like a wireless printer. Um, also putting in guest networks and improving network security. Um, we can also help get, get you faster internet as well. So some points to add to Michelle's. Um, usually the ISP is going to take everything up to your house. So they may come in your house initially when they give you service, but after that, they pretty much claim that anything inside your house is your responsibility. So that's when you're going to need an outside third party um, IT company to help work with you. Um, so just kind of know that's the division that they have um, if you're working with them. And sometimes they're helpful and sometimes they're not. But um, as Michelle said too, as you work with them and you're so lost, that's where somewhere like like your, te your tech company or like tech lab can come in and we can be your IT consultant for you. And, and we would get on the phone with you, do a three-way call and be like, hey, I'm working on behalf of this client. They need X, Y, Z. And so then they, we can kind of translate and, and done that. And, and we've done that for many of our clients, both residential and businesses, um, where it just kind of, it gets too complicated and they need the third party. And so we're happy to do that. Um, Michelle also kept referring to move closer to your router. That is true. However, sometimes that's not going to happen because maybe you have a desktop or maybe you just absolutely cannot move your location or whatever. That is a situation that again, a third party tech company like Tech Lab could come in and we can assess where your router is located and where the waves of it are hitting so that we can give you the most optimal space and use of it. So we have gone in and we've done assessments with clients where we look at the structure of their house, whether it's wood or whether it's cinder block or whether it's other materials, and then we help them move their router to a location that's gonna be the most effective for broadcasting Wi-Fi in their, in their home. So if you're having any issues like that, we're happy to come in and do an assessment Michelle also briefly mentioned like a highly populated area, like maybe an apartment complex or just a lot of residential homes. 
um, we can always move your Wi-Fi too to be on a different um, signal level so that you have a better signal and get better service yourself compared to interference with your, um, your, your neighbors, basically. So if any of those problems are a continuing problem, um, Tech Lab would be happy to, to work with you and help you resolve some of those. Um, one more thing that I forgot to mention earlier, just real quick, is that um, when you go on like a guest network at a restaurant or something, um, sometimes you'll connect in and the guest network won't do anything. And that's because it needs you to go on the web to an, the internet and accept some kind of a contract. So if you just go on the internet at that point um, and go to like yahoo.com, um, you should get there. Exactly. So, so here's the thing, when you're using somebody's free internet, like they're paying for it, right? Like, let's be real. And so, you know, from a small business owner standpoint, you want to get something for giving something for free. So they're trying to collect your data. You often need to at least accept the terms. And by doing that, you're, they're likely giving them the web IP that you're from. It, it, you might need to put your email address in or something like that. That doesn't mean they're necessarily going to do something with it, except what I love is that the next time I go back to Cranky Owls, they know that I've been there before and they just let me onto their Wi-Fi, which I appreciate. But I mean, there, there is, it's a reciprocal relationship when you're using another organization's Wi-Fi. Don't think that it is completely free. Does that seem fair? My gosh, you guys, we're almost out of time. Do we have any questions? Again, today we looked at Facebook security and we looked at what to do when we do not have internet. Any questions for our ladies today? I have one that's probably a little unrelated to this, but not. Regarding the internet, do, do any of you have any experience with internet TV? Where we are up in Monaco, we cannot get either DISH network nor um, DISH TV because of the satellite situation. And so my, have you started using something like a Roku or a Fire Sticker or even YouTube TV on a smart TV? Well, we thought about that, but my nephew said if we would go with Verizon, it's going to be better programming with a clearer reception. I don't know. I thought maybe Roku would work too, but he said if you have a Verizon account already, you buy a jet pack, which is like 139 bucks, and then I think it's 30 or 35 a month which is like half the cost of what DISH or satellite TV would be. And they told us we'd have to take down four trees. Well, yeah, that's not happening. That's like four, you know, anywhere from eight to 10 grand. So. But do you already have internet up there, Mary? No, I do not. Okay. So the only, so that's where that jet pack thing is coming from. If you mm -hmm. had internet up there already, whatever that would look like, that's where the easy, fast option is a Roku or a Fire Stick mm -hmm. or using a smart TV, something like that. And we could have right. a whole conversation on those kinds of things if that would be helpful for folks. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, the uh, so whatever the answer is, the first step, and that's what it sounds like that Jetpack is, is getting internet there. Right. Right? right. Because yeah, boy, the cost of internet, when we really don't need it, we can get what we need on our phones. We go there to oh. get away from internet. We don't work you, from there ever. Can you stream on your phone up there? Um, <laughs> depends on the weather. Okay, I'm gonna give you a different suggestion just out of a random, like a first step. Before you go up next time, download a few things um, like from Netflix or whatever you might wanna watch, download mm -hmm. that on your phone. Mm -hmm. And then truly all you need is an HDMI cable that connects from your TV to your phone, whatever that little end connection is. But okay. like I have, I have an Android and I can get an HDMI C, like mm -hmm. a, the C connection here to go to an HDMI. Literally I can stream right from my phone. Hmm. Okay. You know, the one thing we wouldn't get that way, we would get the major networks, but we would not get like the local news kind of thing, which if you've ever seen Rhinelander news, it's not a big loss. <laughs> Well, and do you have an antenna up there already? We do. Okay. We do. That's interesting though. It's a good question. That, that does happen, especially depending how close you are to the station or not to the station. When mm -hmm. we lived in Indiana, we were too close to the station that we could not pick up any local things. But in general, to your Verizon comment, I have heard that Verizon is very good up in the Northwoods area. So I would not hesitate with that at all. Um, that, that's definitely a good thing. Well, the texts were helpful. They, each one of them came out, tried everything they could think of, 
And at the end of the day, my favorite line was, now, if you're on the other side of the lake, well, hey, there's an easy solution. We'll just pick up and move it, right? So. Uh, Thanks, I would just keep being on the lake. I don't care what side of the lake you're on, Mary. Come on up. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen the pictures. They're wonderful. You guys, so let's, um, let's double check here. Um, I didn't want to put the full poll out today because we did get the suggestion about doing some of the going live from our phones, which we can absolutely do in our next session, which is two weeks from now, same time. But, we're, but before we just brainstorm other topics, we did want to see what are other topics that are on your minds that we could also help you with? Sheila, you look like you want to say something. I could see it in your face. Um. Well, no, the thought in my mind right now is the problems I have with Facebook are kind of bigger than tech. I don't like some of their policies on privacy and selling lists to marketing. And now they're not going to correct misinformation on political things. And so some of the issues I have with Facebook transcend the technical or the hardware. So yep. that's what was kind of running through my mind. I agree. I, and that's, that's one of the things, like when we accept their terms and conditions, we're, we have to play their game. That's right. And your point about when you use a commercial places Wi-Fi, it's not really free either. No. Well, and you know, Sheila, you, we, you and I've had a different conversation about video and then I just helped with a video this week and I would like to use that opportunity to remind everybody of this as well. When you go live on Facebook, live. Facebook owns the content. Hmm. When you use a product like Zoom to go live, well, Facebook owns what they've put on Facebook. You own your content. So like we record this, we can do stuff with this. This is ours. When you go direct live on Facebook, your terms and conditions are that they own it. And I did just do a live. I helped support a local organization as they did a live event this week. And I did notice something on her phone. She was using an uh, iPhone that she was before she hit share, she could actually save it. And I wasn't sure if that allowed her to save the video. I was, you know, I need to play with that a little bit. But in general, if you've put it on Facebook, your photos and everything officially they say facebook owns them that's a really good point yeah but we ordered some shoes for my husband and we ordered them on our cell phones i think from google or oh. yeah from google now all i'm seeing are <laughs> ads on my facebook about shoes yeah. How did they get that information? All the cookies. Well, and the reality is that anytime that you're giving your machine, your fabulous little device, um, authorization to use the microphone, even for things that you're like, why would you need to use the microphone? It's listening. It hears keywords. Sometimes I like to throw a little thing out at my phone and just be like, and actually I'll turn it on and turn my um, password off because I don't know that it needs that, but let's just do that for fun. So I'm now going to talk for a moment about Fiji, how much I love Fiji, how I've gone shark diving in Fiji. And I'm going to say Fiji about five other times. And we'll see how many ads in the next couple of days between Google and Facebook will be popping up on my phone. Uh, I want to speak specifically to Windows 10 on this. Um, Cortana does the exact same thing. Yep. Yeah. It's and Cortana we... is like on everybody's computer who's got a Windows 10. Whenever I'm searching for a vacation hotel or spot, my God, it shows up. Oh my God, Sarah, for you, that must be crazy because you're searching for vacations for everybody else. Oh yeah, I get it all the time. So yeah. yeah it's when you search for that awkward thing like shoe odor remover and then that's what keeps popping up, right? Like something like that. You're like, oh. <laughs> Ugh. And I share my screen a lot. Yes. <laughs> I know. Don't Google the rash you're trying to remove or something. Like that. <laughs> Thank you, Susie. Exactly. <laughs> what do you do? Do, do, she's, do you still have your speaker on? <laughs> I feel like we're going to now stop the recording for the remainder. <laughs>